Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday video. I am currently uh, recording this from Santorini, Greece, which is an island off the coast of mainland Greece, and it's absolutely beautiful here. We just arrived, and uh, we were here for my sister's wedding. You guys might know that if you are a regular live stream viewer. I've not been on the shows recently. Uh, I am taking a little bit of a summer vacation to enjoy this time with my family and everything. So uh, back to the charts here for just a minute. Um, sorry for the lower than usual quality. Uh, audio uh, and the lack of a video camera or anything like that, but we're going to just jump into some setups here as we get into the week ahead. I do this every Sunday, so I got to stay consistent even if I'm abroad. So anyways, let's talk about some charts. I want to talk about the dollar index for just a moment. A little bit of high-level recap of what we saw last week with the Federal Reserve. They did decide to cut by a half a percent uh, the federal funds uh, target rate, which was a pretty substantial Jump. I actually was wrong about that. I thought they were going to cut by 25 basis points or a quarter percent uh, cut, and uh, I thought that that would signal you know, that they were going to go ahead and do this slow and steady. That being said, I would quantify last week's cut as a bit of a cautious 50 basis point cut, if there is such a thing or a way of saying that. A bit of a dovish cut, if you will. Because yes, we cut by 50 basis points, which did act to send the dollar lower, uh, but the market, in my view, actually seems to be getting to a point where it is a bit overzealous with its expectations of rate cuts. And, um, you know, we still have, if we look back to the last few years, the U.S. has consistently shown an outperformance in its economy relative to what an analyst expectations uh, were out there. I actually think that's set to continue. So as contrarian as it may be at this time, I'm a little bit more on the bullish side of the US dollar. In fact, last week I took some trades on that and I'm gonna just share that briefly. Um, all of the trades that we're taking, by the way, can be observed inside of our VIP channel, which will be linked in the description down below. But I wanted to talk about this dollar CAD position I took. I went long USD CAD last week, uh, basically as my choice against the, uh, the, the dollar here. Uh, so I've got a long position on this with a stop below just the lows. And my theory here is, again, I think that, yes, rate cuts are coming, but the market is thinking we're going to get just a ton of rate cuts by the end of the year and by the end of next year. And I think that the U.S. economy's outperformance could potentially push back on that idea a little bit. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the Edge Finder's top setups for the week ahead, let's go ahead and just take out the neutral readings for a moment. We've got some interesting charts to look through here. Now, in terms of the dollar, there's no screaming dollar setups. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my, my cautious, contrarian, bullish view of the dollar is not something that I'm betting the farm on. This is something that I'm looking to potentially look for signs or breakouts to potentially look to get long the dollar if I can find the right setups out there. In the meantime, though, the top setups algorithm from the Edge Finder helps us to find things that are current, now, and potentially looking like interesting ones to go ahead and place trades off of. Now, of course, if you're an Edge Finder user, you know well that this is not a holy grail system that tells you when to buy and sell things, but it does incorporate a lot of different kind of different data points, like the economic data, the technical readings, the sentiment data, and it's giving us bullish and bearish signals overall and generating a high level overview of each chart. Now, I've highlighted here and excluded the neutral readings just so we get bullish and bearish readings only. And what we can see is some charts that have shown up here. And this is going to be kind of my watch list for the week ahead. By the way, if you'd like to try out the Edge Finder or you'd like to purchase the Edge Finder, all the information is down below in the description. We do offer a 30-day trial. It is not a free trial. Uh, it is $199 that goes towards your final purchase. If that's something you're interested in doing, there will be links in the description down below for you to sign up for that or apply for that trial application process. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into some of these charts here for a second. If I switch over, one chart that's looking to me right off the bat interesting is actually the Dow Jones. Now, the reason the Dow Jones is looking exceptionally interesting to me now is that following rate cuts historically, and I don't have this data in front of me, I wish I did, but following rate cuts historically, value stocks typically do quite well. Uh, perhaps this is because sometimes when rate cuts are happening, there is also concerns about the economy in many of those instances historically. Um, I'm not quite in that camp. I think the economy is an okay spot. Uh, but if there's any signs of uncertainty in the economy, some of these more value play or defensive stocks could be more interesting than others in my personal view. So what I'm looking for in this week ahead 
is the name of the game is pullbacks. I'm not looking to chase anything. I'm trying to be patient with this. But if we start to see something like a retracement move from all the bullishness off of rate cuts that happened last week, if perhaps there's a little bit of uncertainty on where how many rate cuts we're going to get, if something uh, in the economy starts to slide, we may see some of these companies uh, pull back a little bit, in which case I may be looking for an opportunity to try and get long on the Dow Jones, as of course, that's one of my uh, possible top setups off of the edge finder. So I do like the Dow going into this week. Uh, some of you guys may also know that in terms of gold and silver, I remain bullish on these, but I actually ended up taking a long position on silver. And this one's been a real big hit so far. We'll see if this one can continue. But I've trailed my stop loss into profit, so I can't lose money on this trade at this point. But I'd like to see if we can take out those highs and continue the rally. Same principle for gold. We've had a really nice run. We're well into the 2600 announced level, which is impressive to say the least. Metals continue to, to roar higher, which is uh, it's just been an amazing year. If you've been bullish on metals, um, that's for me. It's not been my greatest trading year, but one thing that I've gotten very right this year was definitely the metal side of things. Uh, I am up overall about 9% this year, which is not as impressive as had I just bought and held the S&P 500, which is a bit frustrating, but there are years where I beat the index by a lot, and there are years where I don't beat it, and this is going to be probably one of them unless you see some big correction in the index, but again, just something to think about. I also trade very slow and steady, so 9% to me is very meaningful on a larger capital basis, uh, but to me, what I exchange in favor of having a smaller uh, percentage gain on a year is I also have much smaller drawdowns. I think this year my peak drawdown was somewhere around eight to 10%. So if I can come out of this year with like a 12 or 15% gain, that would be a fantastic year in my personal view. Anyways, that's that's on another uh, that's another topic for another video. Let's keep going here. With the dollar index, I want to come back to this just for a second because we just talked about um, you know where things are going. If we do get rate cut expectations slowing, the dollar index could actually start to break out of this downward trend that it's been in. And I think that that's a big signal to look out for. Can we actually break into the 102s again before getting really kind of solidly bullish. That to me would be more of a confirmation signal that we may have actually found a bottom on the dollar index. That being said, we very well could if we see rate cuts come into play because the economy does slide much bigger than expected, we could see the dollar continue to trend lower. So I'm not betting the farm on dollar bullishness, but I am looking for opportunities to get long. Dollar CAD, the trade that I showed you earlier, was a setup that popped into the edge finder's top setups window. That is why I took a look at it in the first place. And uh, we'll see how this one goes, but this is a current trade inside of our Discord VIP room. I mentioned that earlier. If you'd like to see all the trades that we're taking, you can join down below in the description. Okay, so real quick, I also wanna take a look at where the S&P 500 is at going into this week. So last week was incredibly bullish for stocks. It was a really great year, a great month, great week, great year. Everything seems to be on the up and up for stocks. Um, and you know, these are times where I do want to just encourage listeners. It's very easy to look back a couple of years and say, look, the stock market just goes up and up and up. I just need to, just to get in this thing and buy it right now. But let me just warn you that if you go back a long enough time, you'll see years and time periods where the stock market was a really terrible investment. In fact, here's just a quick example. If you had bought in November of 2021 and held your investment for several years, it would have taken you from that point until, let's see, December of 2023, a couple years later, to recoup your losses and just to get back to break even. So indexes are great when they're moving up, but they don't last forever, right? Bull markets are something we have to be careful in. Uh, I, am, I am a buyer in a bull market, but I'm very cautious to any changes in that story that could be unfolding. The way to keep an eye on that is fundamentals, right? Keeping an eye on the economic data, keeping an eye on what the Fed is up to, where inflation is at, where growth is at, so on and so forth. So I'm keeping an eye on that with a VIX currently trading back down in the low teens or, or mid teens around 16. I do think that the stock market can continue its upward move, but I do think it's also due for some pullbacks. Now I'm not betting on the short side of the stock market as tempting as that sometimes is. It's not something I do very frequently and uh, I've not had a lot of success in my trading strategy actually shorting the stock market. So for me personally, I look for pullbacks and what I am looking for is a potential move back to 5570 on the SPX or perhaps a move down to 5500 before I look to start maybe taking another buy. That is assuming I also have a setup from the edge finder. Now again, I mentioned the Dow earlier. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for setups that marry up on the edge finder and on my technical charts. So that's what I'm looking for. 
on the stock market. Same thing for the NASDAQ, well, that one real quick. We take a look at this one, a uh, little bit of resistance coming into play here, just shy of 20,000 on the NAS. Uh, I'm looking for potential pullbacks here, maybe into you know uh, a FIB level or something of support to potentially get long again. But what I'm looking for is again, the technical chart to line up as well as the top setups algorithm to give me the go ahead on the edge finder. So I am, again, I mentioned silver earlier. That's another reason I got long was because the top setups flashed silver up there. So I looked at it, found a setup and it went real well. Another one is oil right now. And oil is actually getting a bullish read. I wanna just take a quick look at where oil is at. It's sitting at resistance, but if we can see some bounce outside of this area, it's possible that dollar and you know oil could see a nice strengthening bounce if there is some idea of increased demand for oil due to stronger economic readings, whether it be from the US or globally. Um, those two things would probably move in tandem if you saw you know, strength in the dollar. Um, it's probably the same reasons that oil could have a nice bounce <clears throat> if we're talking demand side. Now, of course, geopolitically, uh, <clears throat> not too far from where I am, right? The Middle East and, and Ukraine, uh, those places uh, are on kind of a never-ending watch for potential volatility that could come out of those regions. We keep an eye on those things, but there's not really predicting those things from our perspective. As traders, what do we do with that? Well, we just know that keep some sort of uh, uh, defensive play or keep an eye on things like oil and gold um, in those environments, they could potentially spike higher, right? If you get some unfortunate event in the Middle East or, or Ukraine, that does have an effect on the commodities market big time. So we'll keep an eye on those things. Uh, but again, I never try and predict that, right? That's not something that I can predict or control or have any sort of edge on. Uh, all I can do is uh, understand that at any moment, if those sorts of things erupt, I don't want to be caught on the short side. I don't want to be, you know, fighting that uh, that volatility. So something to think about there uh, when it comes to commodities. Now, in terms of yields, really quick, I just wanted to touch on this. So yields have been coming down, down, down as rate cuts are more and more priced into the market. I do actually think, as I mentioned, that the market may be getting a bit uh, too overzealous with its rate cut expectations. I think that TLT could actually pull back a little bit more. I think that yields could spike on any sort of uh, strong economic outlook or uh, you know, the Fed being more hawkish than perhaps expected. But uh, that's, that's just something that I think is worth watching as well. So anyways, that's really all I've got here. Last thing I will say is I am looking at the Russell as well for possible pullback plays in this one. Uh, maybe a break and pullback into this 22.15, but I'm trying to keep it very patient on the um, stock market side of things. September is still seasonally not a great month for stocks. That being said, the stock market is still positive on the month. If we go back to the beginning of September, you know, we're still looking at a 1.2% gain where we left off on Friday. So uh, possible that seasonality comes back into play and we see a bit of selling, a bit of, um, you know, uh, whatever reason seasonality is uh, historically bearish during this time. Where am I getting that data? Well, if I go over here and I take a look at the Edge Finders seasonality scanner, we can go search this up just for reference. We could take a look at the S&P 500. You can see that's what I'm talking about. That, that minus 0.89% historical tendency during the month of September is worth mentioning. So by the way, last call on this uh, edge finder, I mentioned it earlier. If you would like to try it for 30 days or get some more information, you can find out more at a1trading.com or you can use the links in the description down below to apply for a trial or purchase the tool with a discount using that promo code that you can find in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next time.